asking what are DNA nanomaterials because I, I I'm not sure that that's a that's a as a term something in common parlance so okay so DNA nanomaterials are basically materials like molecules and mm -hmm. structures that are made of DNA and um, y you might want to think of DNA like a Lego building block I, okay. I mean it really is like that so we use it basically we take it out of the biological context we know that DNA is the molecule that uh, our body uses to store information to transmit information right, right. Uh, but uh, billions of years of evolution have made DNA this amazing molecule. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so now we just, you know, kind of found out or discovered that we can actually take it and make it in our laboratories and use it to make structures, to make, uh, uh, you know, cages and tubes and all sorts of uh, different structures uh, yeah. that you can do with them. You so that's what the DNA nanomaterial is. You say make it. So how, how does that work exactly? Are you having um, yeast or, or some other sort of small molecule? No, there? we're not making it from biological sources. Hmm. You can make it uh, by synthesis. So you can oh. just make it like a chemical. So DNA is a molecule. So it is a chemical really as well. Right. And uh, over the last 50 years, uh, people have made uh, uh, like engineering advances that where now we have these machines and these machines are called DNA synthesizers. And what all you do is you basically put the building blocks, like the little bases, if you want, of DNA sure. uh, in bottles. Mm -hmm. And then you program the sequence of the DNA that you want. And then this thing just makes them for you. And, you know, in, in a few hours, you just get your DNA. And, and then you can modify it. You can change it. And so, it you know, you use it like a molecule, basically. Right. Yeah. So you almost have a 3D printer for DNA. That's right. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. It's fantastic. Yes. So why did you choose DNA in particular? particular as a molecule. So I was I was just talking about evolution. It's mm. it turns out that DNA, if you if you think of it as a molecule, like a, a building block to make stuff, um, is a very smart material. Okay. And what I mean by that is is that you can really program it. You you know you have uh, basically on the DNA a sequence like A T G C basically and yeah. how they're organized. Once you know that sequence, you know exactly what it's going to do. And so then you can actually make it into different shapes and different structures for different applications. Whereas if you for example say I want to, like why aren't you using a protein for that? Right. For example. Right. Uh, proteins are much more complicated and a little bit less programmable uh, right now given what we know about you know computation and and everything right. so so that at the end of the day when you have the, the 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 sequence of the protein you actually don't know what the structure is going to be like a priori in the beginning whereas with DNA uh, you definitely know you know that it's like the quintessential double helix right, right you know right. so it, you know that it is going to be like that and it's going to have a certain specific shape and size and so then you can actually it's almost like an algorithm it's almost like uh, a computer computer program uh, building structures then using DNA. Right. So th so this is why, you know, we think it's a really powerful molecule for building structures. Right. And so then uh, what are your what are you and your team trying to accomplish? Uh, I think in particular drug delivery sort of comes to mind. That's right. What else? So so drug delivery um, is is a, is is a fantastic field. Thirty years uh, of, of fantastic research, and really the the theme of this uh, of this uh, whole uh, web is is personalized medicine. Yeah. So drug delivery is central to personalized medicine. Uh, but drug delivery has some challenges right now, mm -hmm. and we're trying to overcome some of the challenges with our structures. So, for example, one of the challenges is uh, you can deliver you can you can put a drug inside a container, um, but what you really want is the container to stay closed and to only open let's say in a cancer cell you don't want it to open in normal cells because right. uh, let's say you have a chemotherapeutic inside like uh, some some you know chemotherapy for cancer mm -hmm. that's usually toxic you just want it to be uh, delivered only to a cancer cell not to a normal cell and so that's difficult with current techniques in in uh, in drug delivery and we think that and we have uh, demonstrated that dna structures can actually solve this problem can mm. actually solve this problem of like selective delivery 
of therapeutics. So that's one of the reasons why we would use it. Right. Um, there's many others, but uh, right. that's just an example. Um, has anyone raised any objections, uh, this this being uh, something that might also naturally occur in, in humans and yeah. pretty much everything else alive? That's very true. You're, you're putting DNA in, so so what, what implications might that have? It's a very good question. Mm. So um, what we do, because we have a DNA synthesizer and we're not using DNA from biological sources, mm -hmm. is we modify the DNA chemically. We change it. We change the structure a little bit. So it looks a bit like DNA, but it doesn't act like DNA in the body. Mm. Um, and so it's kind of like an artificial form, if you want, of the DNA. Just a little bit of changes here and there, and nothing in your body actually recognizes it anymore as DNA. Um, and so you can safely deliver it. Uh, you uh, Usually, you know, with these DNA modifications, you don't even have a, a, an immune response. Mm. Uh, but we have to always be mindful, whatever it is that we make, uh, of the biological implications. So it takes a very long time to develop something that's going to go into the body. Sure. Uh, even with DNA, like this modified DNA, if you want. Right. What, what's your What's your background? Like, what led you down this path to this point? So my background, I'm a chemist. Okay. So um, and uh, so chemists basically, there's the biologists who discover all these processes, and the chemists who are making the materials for these processes. And mm. and I'm the, I'm in that, uh, and. Um, just tell you on a personal note, when I was a graduate student, um, uh, there was a, uh, a professor who came and gave a talk. His mm -hmm. name is Jean-Marie Laine. He ended up getting a Nobel Prize. Mm. Um, and he invented a new field called supramolecular chemistry. And when he gave that talk, I was, I was just hooked. I mm -hmm. mean, this is it. That was, for me, that was it. And what he's trying to do, uh, what he was trying to do at the time I was a graduate student, and, and what he has taught us to do mm -hmm. is to assemble molecules, to take molecules, separate molecules, and to, to make them come into structures that are very well defined, just like the way that nature assembles like cells and organis organelles and et cetera. Yeah. Um, so now we can do that in the lab. And that was that was supramolecular chemistry, and that's kind of how I went down that path, basically. Right, that's exciting. And, and you were at Stanford, I guess. I was at Stanford as mm. a grad stu student. And then I went and, and worked as a postdoc with him. He uh, Jean-Marie Laine is uh, in Strasbourg in France. And so I, work, I went and worked for him. I see. And then to McGill. And then to on. McGill, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you run the Slayman Lab. That's right. Um, so what, are there any other things that you guys are working towards, or is it, are you very finely focused no, on that? No, actually, we <laughs> are working quite a bit on a, a, a number of things. So uh, one of the applications is drug delivery and <laughs> biology and cancer, so that's a big area for us. Um, we also work on diagnostics, so we work on basically trying to find fast and cheap ways to figure out uh, the disease and the disease progression, and, and because DNA can actually also do that for you. Yeah. Um, we are working on genomics, so ways to very, very quickly sequence your DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's in collaboration with companies. Uh, we're also working on materials, basically uh, creating materials that that have uh, optical properties, like that have light properties or electrical properties that are very interesting. Um, and Thanks. actually, I kind of like as a sort of an umbrella, if you mm -hmm. want, uh, we really want to understand how molecules come together to make these really organized structures. I mean, this is kind of like the uh, the, the overarching theme in our lab. Basically. Right. Right. To to what ends diagnostic and therapeutic? That's correct. It? Exactly. To mm -hmm. the ends of diagnostics and therapeutics. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, in the in the, at the very beginning of this process, we have to make the structures in right. order to do the studies. And we want to understand how to make these because they're not, you know, simple to make. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. So give us a teaser on what you're going to be speaking about in your keynote this evening. Uh, okay, so some of the examples that I'm going to be giving are uh, basically uh, I'm going to show a movie on how to make a DNA cube. Uh, so let's say, you know, your DNA is kind of like a line, basically. Yeah. It's linear. How do you convince a DNA strand to actually kind of come together and fold and make it cube? And how well can you do this? Like, is it really just like it does it, but only at 1% efficiency? Or is it really good? And, and the answer is actually you can make it to do this very, very well. Uh, so and then how do you engineer it to stay closed and to respond and to open only in the presence of a certain molecule? How do you do that? Like, you know, you have a molecule uh, that other people have said, this is a molecule that is present in this cancer patient. Yeah. Okay. That's the molecule that is going to be 
used. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to make that little cage, that little cube, and that cube is going to come in, it's going to find that molecule, and it's going to have to open selectively. Yeah. How do you do that? Like, how yeah. do you design that kind of thing? Um, so I'm kind of going to walk my audience a little bit through how we design these things and how we make them is there, and uh, how they are used, of course. Is, is there a, um, an answer for dummies that uh, that you could say quickly? Like, is there a... Uh, oh, yeah, there's definitely a design that. principle. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I mean the, the 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 underlying whole thing is that you've got you've got two things, uh, two strands of DNA, and if mm -hmm. they happen to be complementary, they come together very selectively. So you can have like thousands of molecules, very very uh, very similar, but like tiny little differences. Yeah. The only two things that come together are the complementary strands. So that's fantastic because mm -hmm. then you can say, okay, I want the structure to have this part complementary, but this part not complementary. And right. then this one comes together with this one. And so it makes a circle, basically. And then this one comes together with this one. And then I'm going to close it because that's complementary to that. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's kind of a code. And the mm -hmm. DNA strands know exactly what to do without you doing anything. So right. all you do, really, is if you wanted to make a DNA cube right now, seriously, you can um, uh, Go to your garage and order from uh, f uh, from a company and very cheaply actually yeah. uh, four DNA strands. Just tell them to make them. They send them to you. Put them in a little water thing. Heat them, cool them, and out you get your DNA cube. This is how easy it is with DNA. So um, it's just it's just a very powerful molecule. Yeah, um, yeah. But you have to, of course, design it. You you to seem be like that. you seem very passionate about the vernacular uh, uh, uses of of this molecule in a way. Why do you think this one in particular sort of gets you so excited? About it gets me excited because it is so programmable. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know. There's many other molecules. I mean, we have an infinite number of molecules in the laboratory, mm -hmm. um, and I and I guess it's it's hard for a chemist to convince other people that other molecules are not as smart as DNA. But just to but just to think about the fact that uh, you know we have billions of years of evolution that have made this molecule right. the way it is and how selective it is, and right. um, and so we're just taking advantage of that. But it is quite special, this molecule. It's just, and and the fact that you can actually take it completely out of biology and just use it like a Lego uh, building block is also just fascinating because now you can control materials yeah. so well. I mean, there's people now in my field who are trying to actually make uh, 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 electronic devices using, using this. So rather than a computer chip made of, you know, uh, semiconductor sure. stuff, you know, you make it have it make itself essentially not right. fabricate it just you know put the molecules together and they make themselves into this circuit right. so uh th it's just it's fascinating that way it is indeed thank you and thank you so much for for joining us we really appreciate it thank you